आई विल टेल यू हाउ इन द नॉर्मल हेल्थी पर्सन इन अ हेल्थी टिश्यू हाउ दिस फ्लूड मूवमेंट आउट एंड बैक इज रेगुलेटेड वॉट आर द फैक्टर्स विच पुश द फ्लूड आउट एंड वॉट आर द फैक्टर्स विच रीअब्सॉर्ब द फ्लूड बिकॉज वेन दो फैक्टर्स आर डिस्टर्ब अडीमा विल अकर यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ना वॉट आर द फैक्टर्स नॉर्मली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल when heart is pumping left ventricle it is pushing the blood into whole body circulation with pressure the pressure which is generated by pumping of the heart that pressure is called hydrostatic pressure normally you call it blood pressure right and of course as blood is moving forward and it divides into uh, different uh, arterial tree and arterioles then smaller hydrostatic pressure will keep on dropping is that right from here the blood is pumped with pressure heart is pumping the blood in the tissues with pressure but as it is moving forward pressure will drop is that right but in a typical tissue in a classical tissue for example we are taking this example the hydrostatic pressure is let's suppose 35 mm of mercury so i will just write it here this is hydrostatic pressure what is this in a normal tissue this hypothetical tissue which i'm showing here it has pressure of 35 mm of mercury now if fluid is under pressure here and heart is pushing under pressure it will love to go out it will love to go out so it means outward pressures is how much 35 mm of mercury it is trying to push the fluid on both directions outside am i clear but there is something which hold the fluid in normally hydrostatic pressure is trying to push the fluid outward but there is something which is not pusher you can say hydrostatic pressure in the vascular system right hydrostatic pressure is little here but hydrostatic pressure here and osmotic pressure here i will ignore in this discussion because there are minor factors major factor here which i am mentioning hydrostatic pressure inside the microcirculation on the arterial side of the vessels now to 35 mm of mercury and with this 35 mm of mercury it is trying to push the fluid outward but there is something which is not pusher this pressure we can say is pusher it is pushing the fluid outward whenever there is a pusher there must be a sucker or at least holder why you laugh at sucker i'm not talking about that sucker which is coming to your mind sucker means suck the fluid back okay so what we are talking about there is a hold okay i will not use the word holder uh, sucker i will use the word holder plasma proteins you know plasma proteins in this plasma there are certain proteins uh, which are globulin and albumin and fibrinogen but classically albumin that plasma protein has a power to retain the fluid plasma protein has the power to hold the fluid they hold the water hydrostatic pressure is trying to get the water out and osmotic pressure osmotic pressure which is exerted by the presence of plasma protein especially albumin that is trying to hold the water within circulatory compartment and osmotic pressure which is determined by the plasma protein that is usually 25 mm of mercury that is trying to hold the fluid and what it is doing it is trying to keep the water inward it is trying to keep the water inward now we can see that hydrodynamic forces which will eventually determine the movement of the fluid here is determined by the balance between do these two forces this is acting as a pusher and this is acting as a holder or sucker so power outward is 35 power inward is 25 so fluid will move outward or inward outward, outward. so net pressure the difference is net outward pressure is 35 minus 25 so this is the pressure with which fluid will be coming out right and this is 10 mm of mercury so we can say 
in the normal tissue on the arterial end of the microcirculation with the net filter out pressure what we can say filtration pressure what is this filtration pressure forces out the fluid along with its dissolved components through the semi permeable membrane from the intravascular compartment to the interstitial compartment with the net filtration pressure of 10 millimeter of mercury i will repeat it that usually a tissue to tissues to tissues these values little vary we are taking a typical tissue in a typical tissue on the arterial side of the microcirculation hydrostatic pressure is about 35 mm of mercury and colloid osmotic pressure is 25 mm of mercury okay we call colloid osmotic pressure or some books write oncotic pressure what is the difference in colloid osmotic pressure and oncotic pressure yes please they are the same okay just a minute colloid colloid osmotic pressure right this is one term versus oncotic pressure oncotic pressure what is the difference in them before you tell me any difference there is no difference they are one and the same thing uh, colloid osmotic pressure colloid osmotic pressure which is determined by the plasma proteins that is also called just oncotic pressure but if there is colloid osmotic pressure due to proteins in the interstitial tissue that is not called oncotic pressure actually when colloidal molecules like uh, plasma proteins because when fluid is going out plasma proteins cannot go out so what plasma proteins will do try to hold the water for example if husband is going to the other country if wife cannot go she will try to hold the husband don't go that is an example of colloid osmotic pressure but maybe financial pressures are there he has to go do you get it now what i'm trying to say that colloid osmotic pressure simply mean that osmotic pressure determined by the colloidal molecules but when we use the term oncotic pressure when we use the term oncotic pressure it means colloid osmotic pressure produced due to plasma proteins interstitial proteins also exert some colloid osmotic pressure but that is not called oncotic pressure am i clear yes. so now onwards in our discussion i may use the term colloid osmotic pressure or may use the term only osmotic pressure or i may use the term oncotic pressure so it's one and the same thing in our discussion forward so we decided that on this side fluid will gradually come out because slowly and it will come to the tissue survey but what really happens as some fluid has lost but intravascular fluid is moving to the venous end it is moving forward hydrostatic pressure will drop why it will drop because microcirculation as it moves from arterial end to the capillary venous end it become wide bore diameter its total cross sectional area increases right so naturally pressures will drop if there is some pipe if suddenly you expand it pressure inside will decrease so here pressure decreases and on this side this on hydrostatic pressure usually become only 15 mm of mercury and but plasma protein osmotic pressure or oncotic pressure remains almost same because proteins did not leak out the amount of protein which was here and amount of protein which is here is almost same so osmotic pressure remain the same is that right but hydrostatic pressure here it was 35 and here it is 15 so it means now hydrodynamic mechanisms shift a little point actually when a little, some amount of fluid seep out filter out plasma protein become a little concentrated and when plasma proteins become little concentrated oncotic pressure become little more rather than 25 it may become 27 or 28 but for our discussion we will not go into that detail we just assume as fluid is moving in microcirculation on arterial end it is losing the fluid is the right cells especially red blood cells and 
what platelets they are not coming out only leukocyte under certain circumstances they come out and plasma proteins are not mainly going out most of the plasma proteins are retained here very little plasma proteins leak out which will be taken back through lymphatic system is that clear now look at the balance hydrodynamic forces balance here these forces are also called starling forces right what is the balance here now 25 is the puller 25 is the puller or we can say sucker it is trying to suck the fluid and pusher is very weak it is only 15 so what will be the net effect huh? it will pull the fluid from here backward because net difference 25 is pulling in 15 is just like 25 men pulling a person inward and 15 pushing it outward still this men will move inward so fluids slowly start going back right and net filtration pressure is now inward here net filtration pressure was outward so under the 10 millimeter of mercury diff, right fluid was filtering out on arterial side of microcirculation and here at almost 10 millimeter of mercury fluid was being sucked back or reabsorbed back right but a small amount of protein which was leaking from here a very small amount of protein which leaked from here it cannot be sucked back they are larger molecules and some cellular debris or even microbe so they will be drained through this pathway this is our secret pathway lymphatics is the additional or secret pathway to drain the protein rich fluid is that clear this is very important that don't allow these small amount of proteins which are leaking here to stay here it should not stay here it should be taken back because if these proteins keep on coming here and they are not drained they accumulate here those proteins will increase the osmotic pressure here and they will start holding the water and produce edema now these are the normal basic mechanisms right so what are the factors which determine the pre amount of fluid in interstitial tissue interstitial area number one hydrostatic pressure it determines how much fluid will go out on this side osmotic pressure or oncotic pressure which determines how it will be pulled back and then lymphatic drainage is that another way to look at it that this side of circulatory system we can say for fluid intravascular fluid it is pusher and this side of the circulation act as a reabsorbing mechanism or sucker here is the pusher and here is the sucker right in every tissue you have a pusher and you have a sucker i hope you will remember that there is a pushing mechanism and there is a suction mechanism not sucking mechanism right 